Welcome to the New England Journal of Medicine at the 2024 American Heart Association Scientific Sessions. I'm Stephen Morrissey, Executive Managing Editor of the Journal, and I'm with Eric Rubin, Editor-in-Chief, and Jane Leopold, Deputy Editor. We're talking about the SUMMIT trial, Terzepatide for Heart Failure with Preserved Ejection Fraction and Obesity. Jane, prior to this trial, what was known about the cardiovascular effects of GLP-1 agonists? Well, Steve, this is a, a class of drugs that we have been talking about a lot recently because of their beneficial cardiovascular effects. We know that for patients with heart failure and preserved ejection fraction, that these drugs decrease weight, improve quality of life, improve functional capacity, and decrease biomarkers of inflammation. We also know that these drugs improve cardiovascular outcomes among patients with obesity who do not have diabetes. But what we don't know right now is whether or not these drugs translate into improved cardiovascular outcomes for patients who have heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. So the trial tested the effects of terzepatide in patients with heart failure and preserved ejection fraction. Eric, how did it work and what did the investigators find? Steve, the study enrolled patients with heart failure and preserved ejection fraction, which was defined as a left uh, ventricular ejection fraction of at least 50%. And patients had a body mass index of at least 30. They were randomized to receive terzepatide or placebo for a total of a year. The primary endpoints were composite of death due to cardiovascular causes or worsening heart failure and the change from baseline in the Kansas City Cardiomyopathy Questionnaire Clinical Summary Score, a measure of quality of life. More than 360 patients were assigned to each group. After a median of 104 weeks follow-up, the composite endpoint was seen in 36 patients in the trizeptide group and 56 patients who received placebo. The mean increase in the quality of life score, which for which higher values represent improvement, was 19.5 on trizeptide and 12.7 with placebo. Both of these differences were statistically significant, and again, both favored terzepatide. More patients discontinued terzepatide because of adverse events, most of which were known issues with this drug. Jane, what do you think is the mechanism of improvement in these patients? Well, I think that this still remains unknown, although you know, there have been several theories proposed to explain the beneficial effects of these drugs. I mean, the first and most obvious is weight loss. And weight loss uh, with its associated reductions in blood pressure, in uh, cardiometabolic profiles, uh, and inflammation. So all of those things are clearly beneficial for cardiovascular outcomes. What we don't know yet is whether or not there's really a direct effect of these agents at the cellular molecular level of the myocardium and myocardial energetics. So, you know, I think... The beneficial effects that we know are present are great, uh, but we really don't know the whole story behind why these drugs work as well as they do. Jane, that brings up the question of whether or not these drugs would have an effect in non-obese uh, subjects, perhaps even non-obese subjects without diabetes. What do you think? Well, so that's also a good question, um, and I think that remains to be seen because we don't know whether or not the mechanism of action is weight loss, and if it th this is for non-obese patients, and let's even extend that and say non-overweight patients, um, then we can, you know, we don't know. We don't know really if this is all attributable to weight loss and the associated benefits or whether or not this is something that's occurring um, at a biochemical or molecular level. So that will be an interesting study, and uh, I look forward to seeing that. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Eric. This study can be found at nejm.org.